Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a full guide on how to attach an invisible zipper. Because I know a lot of people are kind of scared or confused on how to do it. When I first started sewing, it was something that I struggled with quite a bit, but I got better with time and with a lot of practice. So if you've never sewn an invisible zipper before, I would highly recommend practicing first with scrap fabrics before you get more confident. So I'll give you practical tips along the way and show you the step-by-step -step on how to do it. And I promise you by the end of this video, you'll be able to do a great job. Let's start with the materials. So for this task, you will need an invisible zipper. You will also need an invisible zipper foot and a normal zipper foot. Those usually come with your sewing machine, but if you don't have them, I recommend going out and buying them. Some people can do a great job with just a basic foot. I am not one of them. Having the proper equipment really helps me. And you will also need some leftover fabric. If it's your first time, I recommend starting with something that is more stiff and not slippery like cotton. So you can start by ironing your zipper. This step actually makes a difference. I think I have only started doing this in the beginning of this year and it does help make it more invisible. With the zipper facing down, pull the teeth open and iron it. Now take your fabric pieces. Let's pretend this is the center back of a dress. Mark the seam allowance from the top. For all of my patterns, I use one centimeter or three eighths of an inch. Now take your zipper and place it with the zipper part facing down and the teeth towards the side. And you have to pin it in place so this little plastic thing right here that stops the zipper is placed right below the seam allowance. Pin at the top and pull the zipper slightly so it lays really flat. And I like to mark the zipper one centimeter upwards here as well so I know where to stop. We have to sew it as close as possible to the teeth here. The closer you sew to the zipper teeth, the more invisible it will be, but you can do it too close because then there's a chance your fabric will catch on it and then it will get stuck. Change it to your invisible zipper foot. You can move the needle until it's really close to the teeth. And before stepping on the pedal, try to do it manually just to see if it's not going to crack your needle. If it doesn't catch on anything, then you're good to go. Now backstitch and go all the way to the end. So until that mark we left and backstitch. Now we have to do the same thing to the other side of the zipper. Now repeat the same steps. If it's confusing, you can just close it and turn it around to make sure it's not twisted. Just pin it in place and sew. Now we have to close the side here, place them right sides together and use a regular zipper foot to get really close to the side. And continue stitching all the way until the end. And there you have it. So let's talk about finishes now. There are different ways of finishing your zipper. I'll show you the ones that I use the most. The first one is lining. I like to line the top of all of my dresses. I feel like it makes it look more clean and way more professional. And a great way of finishing a zipper is with a lining. Now place the lining pieces on top and stitch with a one centimeter seam allowance at the top. And cover the zipper here. And when it comes to sewing on top of the zipper, sew it with a smaller seam allowance. Only a foot distance here is already enough. Sewing with a smaller distance for the lining will actually make the zipper less likely to get stuck when you pull. And now, when you trim it and turn it right sides out, it looks really clean. Now I'll do the other side to show you. So for the second way, you can finish it with a facing, which is when the lining only stays at the top, doesn't go all the way down. That's what happens with skirts a lot of the times. And you just have to follow the same steps for the lining, but you won't cover it all the way down. 
But sometimes, even if you line the bodice, you cannot use the lining to cover the zipper. So the third way is just folding the top of the zipper inside. That's what I did for my corset style dress because the lining was sewn to the outside layer to create the casings for the boning, so I couldn't use it to cover it. But sometimes your garment just doesn't have a lining. Or you know those dresses that have a center back panel with shearing in it? That's how you would finish them. This time you have to finish the top before attaching the zipper and instead of skipping the seam allowance since it's already finished, you have to match the plastic part right with the top. And after attaching the zipper using the same method, you just pick up the edge that's left from the zipper, fold it down and cover it. And then you just have to stitch it in place. But of course, the choice of thread and zipper was just to make it easier for you to see it. But when you're making this on an actual garment, don't forget to match the color of the zipper and the thread. And now some extra tips. First of all, always cut those loose threads because they can and will get stuck in your zipper. A mistake some people make and that I used to make is not to wash your fabric before making a garment. Some fabrics will shrink after washing it for the first time. And if you have attached the zipper before washing your fabric, once the fabric shrinks, the zipper won't follow. And you will end up with a wonky zipper because the fabric will be tensioning it. And I feel like a common problem to have is where your waistline meets your skirt. That part sometimes gets stuck, right? From what I have noticed out of my own personal experience, every time I would make a gathered skirt, that will happen. So if you're making a gathered skirt, don't gather all the way until the edge that will be sewn to the zipper. Um, leave a small bit flat right before. I have noticed the bulk of the fabric caused by the gathers will make the zipper get stuck because it struggles to go through all of those layers. It also sometimes gets stuck when you're sewing a side zipper and the angle from the bodice to the skirt suddenly changes there. And to be honest with you guys, I still haven't found a solution that works 100% of the time. Sometimes mine still gets stuck a little bit at the sides. After researching, I have found that you should release the tension a little bit when you're sewing on top of those seams. Some machines have a screw on top of them that can be regulated and it will help. And I tried it and it did help but it still doesn't go 100% smoothly. What I try to do to remedy this problem is try to sew the zipper to the center back seam because most of the time the center back is a continuous flat line, but sometimes it's unavoidable and you do have to add a side zipper. And doing what I said with the tension does help, but if it still gets a little bit stiff, I feel like that's also fine as long as it can get in and out of the garment. We don't really have to be perfect all the time, but I promise if I get around and I find a miracle solution, I'm gonna come back here and share it with you. So this is it for today's video. If it helped you, please don't forget to give it a like and a comment. For small channels like mine, it's really helpful and your comments always make my day. I plan on making more beginner-friendly basic tutorials like this one because I feel like they can be really helpful. So if you like videos like this, subscribe and hopefully I get to see you next time as well. Bye!